Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back again. Hey, good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good Tuesday morning. Uh, still the uh, early part of the week. I feel like this week is gonna go by slow. I just, you know, you just get that feeling sometimes. But yeah, um, training camp. What next week? We're here, y'all. We're here. We are here. Um, I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. I'm ready to see these guys. Um, go at it. These guys I've been talking about on my taking a look at series. I'm gonna be looking at all of these guys, especially the undrafted guys I talked about. Um, you know the the draft picks that we got for this year, um, things of that nature. I actually got to see Connor McGovern at the uh, CSA show when I was there on Sunday. Um, you go back and look at that video um, when we went, was in line for uh, uh, for uh, a door set and. Um, I just feel like God, I think he has CTE, man, because he's not a um, he's not the Tony Dorsett that that we all knew. Um, I just I'm just gonna pray for him. That's all I'm gonna say. But it was really good to see him and to get his signature and chat for him with him for a little bit. It was it was really it was a really good look. Um, so real quick before I get into my next person in the series. Um, I want to say real quick about this whole Ezekiel Elliott thing. Now you guys already know I'm the type of cat that. I don't normally like to voice opinion on things unless I know the facts of what's really going on. What what what's the actual factual? You know what I'm saying? And when I look at um, this team and and everything that surrounds it, and you know all the attacks that's happening against them and blah blah. And but some of these players definitely have to make sure they stay out of the limelight too, because again, um, if you're not out there, there's nothing to talk about. That's all I'm saying. So as far as Ezekiel Elliott goes. Now there's there's reports out there, news out there that um, he might hold out. Now, fans, don't always believe what you hear about what these talking heads says, because especially this this particular individual, I forget his name. Um, he's the same one that said that uh, uh, Des Bryant had a tape out there about himself, about um, you know, multiple police coming at his house all the time and this and that. And uh, tapes of him abusing his mom, and, and there's there's more tapes out there of him, and, and blah blah blah, whatever whatever the case may be. I don't I don't pay attention to none of that because when you look at one person saying this, and it's like it didn't stick. The story didn't stick. Now let's use some common sense, fans. Now you already know I'm gonna bring a different perspective to light to you. So this is it. Why in the hell would Ezekiel Elliott? cause more confusion and more bring more attention to himself by holding out with the Dallas Cowboys. One, he's still under contract for what, another two years? Two, um, he just had a conversation with the commissioner, Roger Goodell, about staying out of the limelight, staying out of trouble, um, not putting himself in these situations. So why in the hell would he sit out of training camp or hold out of training camp to get fined 40 plus thousand dollars a day, a day, not a week, a day, 40 plus thousand dollars a day to get fined for not coming to training camp, to bring more attention to himself. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? And if that's the case, Ezekiel Elliott was at all of the off season program, the voluntary stuff I'm saying. He was at OTAs, he was at, he was at the mini camp. He was with the Cowboys in the off season working out with the team, working out with Dak, doing his thing. So, I take that with a grain of salt. And I, that's one of those type of things I believe in when I see it. You know, because of this whole Melvin Gordon situation with the Chargers and what he's doing over there and trying to hold out and him comparing himself to Zeke Elliott and him mentioning Zeke Elliott, of course somebody's going to want to use that as clickbait and be like, oh, I can make an article about Ezekiel Elliott possibly doing the same thing. So before you guys just just think for a minute before you um, start believing everything that you hear, don't do that. It's the reason why us cowboy YouTubers are here. Just bring you back down to light. Just just so you can, you know, have a better understanding of things. Cause what don't make sense ain't gonna stick. That's all I'm saying. Now with that out the way, um the next person in my series I want to talk about is our well, not our first round draft pick because we didn't have a first round pick, but our first pick in the draft, which was our second round pick, number 58 pick in the NFL, 2019 NFL draft, Tristan Hill, defensive tackle out of UCF. Um, 
you guys already know it was a lot of not drama but it was a lot of talk around our 58th pick in this this year's draft um for obvious reasons because this team needed two big things on defense interior of the defensive line defensive tackle uh one technique um three technique um just a defensive tackle in general um and safety those are the two biggest positions that i know every fan was looking forward to get so me personally, when I did my mock draft, I had I had Tristan Hill up there as far as like an uh, option, but I really wanted to go with Juan Thornhill or Taylor Rapp. Now, both of those guys were available at the time when the Cowboys were picking them. They had they had their, they had their pick of the litter. They could have got they could have well they got Tristan Hill obviously, but um they could have got Juan Thornhill. They could have they they could have gotten Thornhill. Now um. Or was it Taylor Rapp? Either one of them. They could have got either one of them. Now, I look at it like this. It would have been nice to have Taylor Rapp, but the Cowboys definitely wanted to beef up that defensive tackle position. They felt it was more of a need for them to fill that void than it was to fill safety because they was like, oh, well, we can get um, a veteran to come in or we can get one of these young guys that we have on this team because, again, they're around the team. They're coaching these guys. They see – what they're doing more than we are. Remember, they had a lot of DBs and stuff on the practice squad from last year that they also are back on the team for um, getting ready for training camp this year. So maybe one of these guys could step up like Chris Westry. If you go back and look at my video on him, I was talking about Chris Westry as well. 6'4 guy, 4'3", um, 4, 4, 4 um, 40. Um, the guy is real fast, real lanky, real rangy, and uh, – can uh, block that ball out the sky pretty much. It's almost like post up a basketball player. But anyway, um, basically a Chris Richard type of guy. And I thought that it was interesting when we did pick Tristan Hill because you would think that it would just be Rob Marinelli or or um, Big Cat being the ones um, to only want him. And I'm like, okay, but when you have Chris Richard, Chris Richard actually said that, yeah, Let's go ahead and get that defensive tackle. So when you have your secondary coach saying not advocating for a safety and is okay with you picking a defensive tackle, that says a lot about this young guy. Um, you look at what the Cowboys are looking at right now with Tristan Hill, they think very high of him. Um, they think that he could come and, and contribute some right away. Like, they're, I mean, he's going to be in competition with Antoine Woods. I'm, I, that's the matchup that I'm looking for in training camp. Uh, for these guys battling for that starting de defensive tackle position. Um, but again, the Cowboys did their due diligence. I'm, I'm proud of what they've done. They went in this draft and they got that interior of that defensive line squared away because, again, that's what we were missing. You look at that Rams game, we was getting torched in the middle. I mean, granted, because we had a lot of injuries, um, but it is what it is. That you know, Injuries are inevitable. You want to make sure that you cover your ass and you have um, – you dot your I's and you cross your T's pretty much depth depth is important now as far as this kid Tristan Hill um, UCF guy um, played three good quality seasons um, in the trenches for for UCF now there were character issues about this guy um, and scouts were wondering why he only started one game his senior year you know, with the new coaching staff coming in, there were talks about how he got into it bad with his coaches and things of that nature. Look, sometimes you don't get along with your new coaches when they come in. Things happen. Yes, he might have had a little bit of maturity, immaturity issues then, but when you see him coming to the Dallas Cowboys, he came in here and he was like, look, that stuff is behind me now. I am, I am who I am right now, and I'm ready to compete for this Dallas Cowboys team. And he looked like he's ready to go. And um, he's, he's. I don't think that he's going to be an issue with the Dallas Cowboys. I, I really don't think so, um, because again, we've seen this all before. <laughs> um, he earned All Conference honors his sophomore year, and if you look at his tape from from college, like he he really has a high motor. When this guy's out there in that field, he's giving it his all. And he's, he's out there wreaking havoc. And that's what you want. You want a guy that can come and get that push through the middle that you don't normally get from that position. Because, again, we all look at the defensive tackle position as the, the, the lunch pail 
uh, position. That's the work hard position. That's the position that sets it up for the ends to get sacks, to do their things. If you're getting sacks from the interior of the defensive line, like how Aaron Donald does, that is phenomenal. Anything more than, I want to say, five or six sacks in a season at the defensive tackle position is freaking phenomenal. And those of you guys that don't understand how, why that is, is because, look, your edge rushers are the ones that are primarily rushing. Defensive tackles are there to clog or contain. They're in there to take on the blocks and um, try to collapse that inside. So that's their main job. Their main job is not to rush in the passer. But if they can get there, <laughs> damn it, let them get it. Um, and that's what I, that's what I, and I don't want to bring him up like that, but that's what I missed about the, the ability of David Irving. If David Irving wasn't such a damn fool, I feel like um, <laughs> that'd have been great for us because he's done a lot of great things, especially he was, I, I used to call David Irving the Green Bay killer, but you know, now that he's not here, we're not going to speak on that. But again, let's see what Tristan Hill can do. I'm, I'm um, looking forward to him in training camp and seeing what he could do for this Cowboys team. Um, but again, the Cowboys weren't concerned. Obviously, when they drafted him, they did their research on him, and they looked and said, hey, this is a guy that we want on this team, and this is what we're going to go with. We think that he's going to be great. We had conversations with him. We had him come visit. This is, it is. It is what it is. So, um, little, you know, and, and for every guy that I do in this series, I do a fun fact about them. So, a little fun fact about this guy. Um, he initially committed to Georgia Tech. Um, I think right before his senior year, he was um, an offensive lineman before he was on the defense um, playing the high school. Now, that, 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 that's the funny thing. Um, uh, he later opened up his recruiting um, and, I guess, uncommitted to Georgia Tech. And he actually signed with Virginia. Something happened with Virginia. I don't know the situation with that. Um, that fell through. Um, and he was he was released from it, and um, he ended up signing with, uh, well, going to UCF. Um, well, yeah, getting a scholarship, going to UCF. So, and then he had three great solid years with them. So, um, I got to go back and look at that to see what happened with that, with with those other schools and why he didn't go to those other schools. But um, it, it's interesting when you look at these guys and how they got to certain places and things of that nature. But I know some of us were a little down about getting him um, in the first round, but I think that, that it's going to come back and it's going to be a good decision that we made. Now, Taylor Rapp and Juan Thornhill, they may also be great for their respective teams, which I'm cool with. But again, we're, we're going to be fine. And I know a lot of people are still worried about safety, but um, hell, they were talking about how much Jeff Heath has been stepping up. And I don't know, you guys don't understand how, how much value Jeff Heath has on this team. But we'll talk about the safeties in another one. I might dedicate a whole video to talk about our, uh, our secondary and stuff, um, just to get some perspective on that one. But again, uh, let me know what you guys think about Tristan Hill. I already know, I already know that you guys love Tristan Hill because um, I think he's going to be great for the Dallas Cowboys. I think that he's going to have a solid first year, not great. But I think that he's going to have a solid first year. He's going to definitely contribute and help the Cowboys in that middle. And then from there, he's he'll probably be a beast come, come forward. Because, again, greats don't happen overnight. Demarcus Lawrence wasn't Demarcus Lawrence until three years in. Remember that. Um, so with that being said, y'all, thanks again to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I, I appreciate you guys. Um, Anita, I don't know if you see this video, but shout out to you. Um, sending prayers and condolences to your family. Um, I know you lost your father. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about it, but um, I'm telling you right now, um, sending my condolences to your family. Um, again, us Cowboys, we are a family. We stick together. This is what we do. Um, I will always give you guys positive messages on a daily basis. And again, you guys are free. If you guys feel like you need to talk about something, if it's not football, if you got something going on in your mind and you want to chat with E2, and, 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 you know, you just want to talk to somebody, talking helps, trust me. Because, again, you could be in a bad situation, and that situation could be ultimately better just by having a conversation with somebody, and it just makes you feel better in your soul. Because, again, this is what we are. We are Dallas Cowboys. We are family. We're supposed to stick together. So all that hate and stuff can go out the window because I'm all about the positivity on my channel. So with that being said, y'all, it's your boy E2Blue, always keeping it real. I'll speak to y'all soon. Y'all have a great Tuesday.